Steve, hi. Let's start with Extreme Ideas. Um, what was the blueprint at the beginning and how has it evolved over time? To be honest with you, I, I wish I could tell you this was the blueprint. Uh, the only thing I, I was so sure of was that I've, I had this strong conviction that advertising in Nigeria, the way it existed then, could be run better. I, I had a couple of ideas about things that could be done, uh, but honestly, I just didn't figure it out very elaborately. So, I mean, we, we kept on learning on the job as we, as we moved along. Okay, so what were some of those things that you saw that you felt needed to be changed? For instance, I think uh, in terms of how personally you take the client's business, I thought it could be better. So for every brand we work on, for us, it's a matter of life and death, to be honest. And if you look at it, marketing is war, so it actually is a matter of life and death. And secondly, in terms of just getting young people together, uh, the, 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 the stereotype or the stereotype of the average ad man that would be in a position of responsibility in Nigeria at that time was you had to be old, old and grey. Yeah. We, we believe in youth because I believe strongly that this business is for young people. So all of those things, training of our people, exposing to global best practices, pitching at the World Cup of Advertising like in Cannes and every other stuff, I thought uh, that weren't, weren't being done at that time. Absolutely. So if you look at this place, I'm by far the oldest person. Everybody you see is really young and uh, agile and active. And how, how, how does that now translate in, um, in terms of ideas that you present to clients? If you hire old people, you get old ideas. If you hire new people, young people, you get new, bright, brand new ideas, which is exactly what's happening here. So people always ask me, how come, how come your ideas are so fresh? So sometimes people see some really, really great ideas on TV or any other platform, and they ask me, or oh, did Extreme do that? Because they just naturally associate any outstanding work with uh, extreme ideas, you know, that's how it works. Let's go to social media a little bit. Um, a few days ago, there was the bank wars. It sure, sure. blew up uh, on Twitter, especially. Just, what are your thoughts on that generally? Well, to be honest with you, I think, uh, shout out to the bank that started it. I thought it was brave of them because those are the kind of work that clients are usually too afraid and nervous to do in this part of the world. And again, because of regulation and legislation, uh, and you can see how it ended. Apparently, one of the banks went to CBN to report, and then they were forced to withdraw that uh, post and apologize. So, yeah. well, I how think do you feel about that? The withdrawing. It is disappointing because I mean, people should respond. I mean, this is once you bring your brand into pop culture space, it's a good thing for the brand because then you're able to get mass appeal. I mean, banks. Are usually boring. I mean, no, no, <laughs> no disrespect, but working on a bank is a very boring job. Now somebody comes and sparks off a very nice fire, like the, the originating bank did, and uh, you're yeah, just going to bring it to an anticlimax with an apology, and uh, uh, yeah, it sucks. By 2015, there was a report that Nigeria's ad spend was yeah. around 97.9 billion naira. So obviously, advertising is a lucrative industry. But it's also notorious because um, the money doesn't really flow down well to the entry level creatives. Um, why do you think that is the case? Well, I mean, a lot of numbers just keep uh, floating around as to what's the size of the uh, advertising industry in Nigeria. But again, if you look at it, I'm not even shocked that it doesn't flow down at all. And I'll tell you why. The government is still by far the biggest spender on, on marketing comms. But again, because the government will probably not even spend that money with registered ad agencies, which is why as vice president, with, alongside my president, we're going to be challenging that. He said, because what the government does is that they just look for somebody's sister or somebody's nephew and just give them the job and God knows what happens thereafter. And you can see it from the quality of the job, jobs that are marketing comes later that comes out of government. Okay. So that's on one hand. Secondly, for the big spenders who are probably the multinationals or the Nigerian international companies, they want a, an agency of repute, you know, because, I mean, you can't just give your business to anyone, you know, that's tested and trusted with all of the track records. The entry-level creatives probably don't have those kind of track records, which is why it's a lot more difficult for them. But, I mean, for the next two years, uh, the, the AAA and uh, 
Exco wants to like push both on the government front and on the local front for us to be able to harmonize and make sure that this money goes around to everybody who is qualified to practice advertising as much as possible. Okay, so um, let's divert a little. Mm -hmm. Say someone wants to get into advertising, sure. they're just um, finishing school or mm -hmm. they want to change careers, what mm -hmm. would your advice to them be? The, the first important thing is to, to get uh, certified. You know, there's something called APCON, Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria. It's, it's, a, it's a body, a uh, legislative body set, set up by the government, by law, to regulate the practice of advertising in Nigeria. So you can't, ideally, you should, if you, APCON will tell you, you'll be arrested if you practice advertising in Nigeria without getting a certification. So that's, that's a good starting point. And it's also good to look to go to any of the advertising academies uh, in Nigeria. Yeah, we have a couple of them now. Go to Orange, go there and brush up your skills or look for an agency to, to do some kind of internship period uh, with and then start to build your experience from there. Okay, so um, let's talk about um, social media again. How have um, social media and digital marketing shaped the way, um, say, your firm goes about product marketing, advertising, how has it changed? All it's, it's changed a lot. I mean, if you look at uh, in all the developed markets, I mean, it's part of the, the mix, the marketing mix you propose to a client. And in Nigeria, it's even much more so. There's the good side and there's also the bad side. The good side is that now you can actually track how your communication is doing real time. If you put it out, you know, Nigerians, you don't hold back any punches if it's crap they will tell you it's crap if it's nice they tell you they love it you know so you can actually begin to see how people are reacting to your comms that's the good side the bad side however is that now with a plethora of influencers some of them with maybe bought followership clients are putting their money where they can actually track because we have so many influencers these days that sometimes i think we need to question what is the return on investment because how many of those influencers are able to put up something that will convince a consumer to take action in favor of a brand, which is to buy? And unless we're able to prove that, I think that's an area the clients should look into to make sure that they are getting value for their money. Okay, so um, generally for record labels in Nigeria, um, I mean, there are a couple of challenges that they face. Sure. Well, what are some of those challenges that maybe you have faced as a record label? Well, I mean, so definitely there's no structured money from the banks coming into your, your business because I don't think the banks actually believe so much in the entertainment space because they've not really supported that much as far as I know. That's one. So funding is still an issue. Secondly, I think some of the problems we face are actually, can also be self-inflicted -inflict, problems. Okay. I.e., uh, say maybe a football club now decides to go and sign uh, Messi, Ronaldo, and all of the top strikers in the World Cup, signs all of them. Everybody knows that only 11 players can play a game, okay? Everybody knows that in every game, max you can play two strikers or three strikers at the very worst, okay? Now you have, you've signed about 15 strikers and you put them on the bench. What's going to happen? Striker starts to get disgruntled and people start to get upset that they are not getting enough playing time. It's the same thing with music. You can't sign as an indie label. You can't afford more than three to four talents at the same time because you, you don't have a deep pocket like the big Universals and the Sony. So cut your <laughs> coat according to your cloth. But here we find a situation where labels now sign 15, 20 artists on their roster and then all of the challenges uh, just begin. So between all of those things, you have the problem <laughs> uh, going round and round for the music industry in Nigeria. Lastly, apart from extreme music and um, extreme ideas, you have um, a few other initiatives. So, so just talk to us about them. Well, I mean, uh, the one I'm really, really very proud of is uh, our corporate social responsibility that we do every year. Uh, every August one, like uh, another one is just a few days away, uh, we will be renovating the school in the Keja, you know. Uh, and for the first year, we renovated a block of six classrooms in a, in, a, in a school in this estate. The second year, we renovated uh, 
the reformatory home for boys in Ikeja. And the next following year, we donated ICT material to <clears throat> another school around Maryland. And then we've built a library for another school that never had library since its inception. Last year was when we really, really took it outside Lagos. Uh, the school that Boko Haram burnt down in, uh, in Chibok, uh, the students in that school had to be moved to another school. And therein was a challenge because the new school did not have enough furniture for the children from the Boko Haram, from Chibok to sit, to sit on. So we, we constructed about over 370 uh, desks and table and chairs and for the Chibok girls so that they, sh they stopped now doing shift because uh, they had to now be schooling in the afternoon while the original owners of the school uh, were schooling in the morning. So I, I think I'm very proud of that initiative and people ask me why do you do this? Is it that extreme uh, ideas have so much money and I, you don't have to have all the money in the world to support your community. We really, really believe in community support and we'll continue to do what we do every year. And for someone that came straight from the street like I did, I understand what it is. I understand how, life, how hard life can be in there. And I've been able to like, share that dream with the rest of my team. It's, it's, it's in our DNA now to just come out and support uh, our, our local community in any way that we can. Thank you very much. Sir. It's nice talking to you. Thank you.